everyone, it's Christina from Christina's Art Corner. How is everybody today? Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to definitely show you some items that I've hauled, um, but I also thought I might mix in there. I've been reorganizing my art room, and many of you know that, I'm so sorry, I'm out of breath. I've noticed in my last like few weeks of videos, I'm so out of breath. A lot of it has to do with me being in pain and like I'll forget to breathe and then take deep breaths. So I apologize right off the bat. I'll just try to catch my breath. A lot of you know that I got some news about having a shoulder impingement and uh, epicondylitis in my elbow on my right hand side. I get injections and therapy is scheduled for the 22nd. But in the meantime, I go stir crazy when I don't have things to do. So telling me that I can't go at the pace that I was going before has been quite devastating if I'm honest. And I'm sure many of you out there can relate at some point in your life or know someone in that situation. I did have shoulder surgery years ago. And this is, I think, now the second or third impingement. I'm one of those that like when I get really interested in a coloring page, like I will sit there for hours and hours and hours. And I do take breaks, but probably not long enough. And so this has been some time to reflect on my schedule and what it is that I am doing with my time and what I need to do to make some changes moving forward. So we'll talk about that. I figured we'd go ahead and do the haul items first and talk through what I am doing this month since my schedule has changed. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, in this bag of goodies... Let me explain. <laughs> a while ago, I had hauled this color pocket, which is a travel coloring set. And they give you the pencils and then underneath are cards. And it's postcard size. And you can substitute your own pencils in there. But I figured I would show you that first so that you can, it came in this nice little bag and I like to, I took it to Florida with me a bit ago. So I had to show you that for the next items to make sense. So I ordered from Color Pocket and these are from Etsy. Uh, I ordered um, a couple of bundles of postcard sets. And I thought that I would be able to go ahead and like maybe do some watercolors maybe some ink tents, something something like that. So I got several sets. I got Color Me Kawaii and Black Girl Power is on, they've separated them in this baggie. So we have blue, beautiful girls here. And then we get to some chibi girls. Now, I was thinking about sending my family uh, some postcards and that's where this idea came about but I got some holiday ones specifically but I, I liked these so for travel or at any time something small that I could color these and it comes on great paper it's cardstock so you could use anything you want so there's that pack and then there's the holiday fun and holiday hugs so we have snow day <laughs> Just some cute little images here. Whoops. And then you have your postcard part on the back. Got some snowflakes. And then here's the holiday hugs. And I thought these were really sweet and cute. I thought it would also uh, encourage my granddaughter maybe to make some uh, cards for their parents, the, all the grandchildren really. And so yeah, that's something that we can do as a project together or what have you, but I thought that might be a nice idea for me to send something to my family outside of the state to give a little taste of what I'm doing on a daily basis. <laughs> Not so daily now, but you know what I mean. And I went on eBay and I found a million Christmas cats. Now the funny thing is, is that the picture doesn't show that it's Goodwill $1.99. I did pay more than $1.99 for Christmas cats, but it has colored pages in it. So let me just move this. 
So I did notify the seller. Like it's not it's not horrible coloring, you know. But I was looking forward to coloring these two pages specifically. <laughs> I could touch them up a bit. They didn't do too bad a job. But it's markers and there's shadow. And there's a few um, bits on some of these pages here. <laughs> that's coverable. That's that's not a problem. And then a little bit here. If it's in pencil, I can erase it. It's not a big. It's not that big a deal. But it's when it's marker. Here's one. But I really, really wanted this book, and I was so excited to find it. And I just notified them, and I'm like, oh, here's one. <laughs> I notified the seller and just said, you know. It says right on the front cover, $1.99. I paid more than that, and there's quite a few pages that are colored. So what can we do? Uh, usually they will send your money back, tell you to keep the book. Um, I know this was the last one uh, from the seller, so I'm not sure if I'll have any luck trying to get it from another eBay. I don't know if I said Etsy, but I meant eBay. Um, but happy to have the book regardless. Also on eBay, um, I got the Creative Haven Wish You Were Here from Teresa Goodridge. As I got this one at a really good price. It was less than on Amazon. And it's hard to go wrong with a Teresa Goodridge book. And I thought for some of these, what I might do, as some of you have suggested, and I know quite a few people do do this, is to copy it onto good paper and maybe do because what's bothering me the most my shoulder is pencil coloring I bear down too hard eventually I spend a lot of time uh, a lot of hours and my body is just telling me don't don't do that so much <laughs> like I'll be able to get back into doing my pencil coloring don't get me wrong but I already have um, today but I had to do like 30 minutes and stop and we'll see if I go back to it today but yeah lots of really really cute images in here so that is Teresa Goodridge wish you were here and then same story eBay I got the escape to Christmas pass I really wanted this book good wives and warriors and the the book itself is in good shape uh, but We've got colored pages again. <laughs> but I love some of the images in here. I really, really, really want to color them. And to be honest, some of them I want to color, like, even if it's not Christmas. Like this one. I like the size of the book. I do love to color ornaments. But yeah, these. this is marker. So I won't... I can go over with pencil. Yeah. And here we go. There's this one. <laughs> I thought maybe what I could do is get make this like really gold and sparkly finish up what they started with like watercolor pens uh, it seems to be handling it okay it's kind of fun to do fix it pages I haven't actually done one on video but it might be fun to do if y'all are interested I'm not sure it will happen in December but um, if you want to do like a series of fix it pages I still think it's worth it to get these on eBay because, let's be honest, I'm not going to wind up coloring every single page in every single book I have. So yeah, Escape to Christmas Pass by Good Wives and Warriors. And then I was going through my collection and realized that I did not have Tales from the City Among the Stars. I don't know how I wound up passing up on it, but I love Hannah Carlson and I just needed, I just needed it. Especially since I've had my shoulder issue, it's very easy to lay in bed and just uh, click add to cart, click add to cart, and then I go to my cart and I'm like, save for later, save for later, save for later, <laughs> to put some things on my Christmas list. But yeah, I'm sure you all are familiar with this book, but oh, I love these pages. I love the scenes. And I saw a couple of people on their completed pages like do a few of these and I was like why don't I have that book and they colored them beautifully of course and I'm like I want to color that I'm such a big kid 
So yeah, I think this one is really cute. I like it. That one's so fun. Yeah, cool. So Tales from the City Among the Stars by Hannah Carlson. That will complete the collection so far. And then I had uh, hauled the other book, uh, Dream Coloring, and I got Mindful Coloring uh, because I really liked this style of book. And this is illustrated by Alona Sofchuk. And this was copyrighted in 2020. And I just like the paper. I love all the sweet and cute images. And any time of year, I think you can color in books like this. And so that definitely makes me happy. There's, there's one that could be wintry. It's a nice thick book. There's lots of pages. Some cats. Got some Easter and summer. Lots of really cute things. Look, look at these animals. <laughs> and a painter look, with her easel. Fun. Very whimsical. Made for kids, but I think it's great for adults too. As many of them are. That one's cool too. So yeah, that's Mindful Coloring for Kids, Creative Coloring for Calming Kids, Great Paper, 90 Scenes to Color, and yeah, the good price for that many pages. And then I've been waiting for this one to arrive. I got this one from eBay. It's Underwater Worlds from Renata Krasik. And we got to prepare now for Mermaid. <laughs> And this is copyrighted in 2023. And lovely paper, one-sided, perforated, underwater scenes. Definitely going to be splashing some flashiness on these pages. Oh, look how fun. <laughs> Cute. Look at this crab. Oh, my gosh. I can't. It's just too fun. Super excited. <laughs> Look at how happy he is with himself. <laughs> oh, I love books that make me laugh. And these last two sure do. And then... I got a hold of the Pop Manga Beauties and Beasties by Camilla Dierico. And in this book, I didn't see a complete flip through by anyone I was avoiding. But I see that there's a lot of really sweet images in here that I definitely want to color. And I love all the big background space that makes me very excited. That's creepy. <laughs> this one's hilarious. <laughs> I can't wait to color that one. <laughs> but yeah, sweet angelic faces. That one looks see like it has a break in the line art, which is not a big deal to me, but yeah. Then it's heavier, like on these pages. These are so cute. Adorable. And a beast. <laughs> so cute. Look at this guy. <laughs> a little yeti. Yeah, I think these are fun. Definitely love the dragon. Yeah. So I'm happy to get this book. I want to color in uh, her books more in 2024 for sure. And then a pencil set that I got was the Black Edition. I got a good deal on this on eBay. And so I went ahead and got the 100 Black Edition. And I have not actually opened the box, this portion. So I understand this thing folds, right? Oh, look at all those 
marks inside from the pencils. Okay. Oh, okay. So I definitely think I wouldn't want to keep it in this. Definitely going to have to put it in a case. But yeah, look how beautiful they are. I do love the, the graphics on this. And this seems like it would be a really good idea. But mm, yeah, they they want to fall out even just trying to like fold them up. So I plan on using these and seeing what I think. And just I normally would do that in my haul videos, but I'm trying to go a little easier on myself. <laughs> but yeah, it is it is a beautiful uh, graphic on here. It's a shame that the pencils wouldn't be able to stay in here. I mean, you could keep them in the box, but so here's all of our colors here. What else does it say about it? Extra smooth, soft lead for rich, brilliant colors. Ideal for light colored and dark papers. Cool. I am excited to try these out. I de-stashed several sets. If you watched my least favorite videos, yeah, I got rid of those sets. <laughs> I donated, donated them to a, an art therapy center locally, along with some other supplies. So, but yeah, I'm really happy to get the black edition since I went ahead and de-stashed some pencils that I can add this to my collection for now and see how I like them. I'll definitely come back and let you all know what I think about them if you're thinking about purchasing them. And then on Blick, I got these Pale Pastel Copics. Uh, they were having a, was it 55% off sale or, or maybe even more? And so I caught these pastels. Now, I'm showing you in this video a little tour of how I reorganized my room. So you'll probably see that I, I have very few in comparison to my Ohuhus. But I mainly had like the fluorescent, well, those are Ohuhus. Let's not do that. <laughs> but I mainly had dark colors. Let me just show you. Over the years, I subscribed to like Sketchbox, uh, what was it? Scrawler, um, Sketchbox subscriptions, and they would wind up sending you one or two Copics. So I have like three blacks, and then I have a bunch of darker colors. So I thought I would go ahead and get some pastel ones. I had a little room in my case. And I thought, let me go ahead and get some pastels. And uh, I was purchasing a couple other things from Blick. So I, when I saw that they had a sale, I was like, yeah, let's get those. So let's show you what colors come with this pale set. Let's try them out. Let's try them out real quick. Let's just go to a page here. Ooh, beautiful. Nice aqua. Pale thistle. Like a gray lavender. And this one was the moon white. Very pretty. And then this one Let's see here. This is the, am I loquat? Let's say that carefully. And that's viola or viola, however you like to say it. And here we go. Light reddish yellow. So yeah, I think those are some nice colors to work with. So I'm excited to use these. I also, some of my Ohuhus are, um, I did get a pastel set um, from Ohuhu, but I like to base a lot of my pictures with the pastel tones. So yeah. And something very interesting. I was, while I had ice on my neck, uh, um, what's it called, Biofreeze on my neck and shoulder and pain medication and muscle relaxers. <laughs> I was watching uh, Lindsay Frugal Crafter and she just did a review 
on this masking powder. Now you know from one of my last hauls, I told you I got a, um, my liquid masking tape had failed me, probably because it was older, and ripped one of my Camilla Dierico pages face uh, in half. <laughs> and I was careful and I was, you know, pulling this way to get it to come off from the top. I was being careful. And it was frustrating, so I got a pen. But then when I was demonstrating for you all, I noticed like the bubble issue. And so then it gives you a break in the line and you can have seepage. So she reviewed this masking powder from an Etsy seller. And I'll link her video in the description. But these these three folks here, um, Chris Art's video on masking powder, Renaissance short video on masking powder, and Frugal Crafter also um, has a review. She did a watercolor painting and she just basically brushed this on and then did her watercolor and then she just had to wipe it off. Just brush it off. And it was amazing. And the really cool part, let me just let me just make sure I'm honest here. I think it was eight dollars. But this would like it's three grams of powder. And I like to do a lot of my own watercolor that I never show you all <laughs> in journals. And so I definitely can use um, these and I was just so impressed with um, Lindsay's on Frugal Crafter that I just had to get it and try it out. So if you're interested in me trying it out as someone not as experienced as probably these folks here, then um, let me know because I would be happy to give it a try. The other thing that I got from her Etsy shop was some watercolors. And so this is the Megan Quinlan set. And let's see here. It's April Mathis at Little Creative Me on Etsy. And I got these. This is what the colors look like. And I got these handmade watercolors. And I definitely want to try these out. I have an empty... Uh, palette that I can try out but there's raw umber, Payne's gray, ultra marine green and still de grain and a Paris blue and a burnt umber so we have a raw umber and a burnt umber so I'm looking forward to trying these out like I said normally I would have prepared and done that for you but just give me a little more time for for me to get back to my my usual self and I'll make sure that I do that. But let me know in the comments if you'd like to see these. These are beautiful colors. Look how gorgeous. I love, I love what, you know, I love all art supplies. What can I say? I mean, I've been collecting and doing different kinds of art since 2014 steadily. Well, I say steadily. Not every day and not all the time. It turned into coloring. Um, but that's why I have acrylic supplies. Uh, oil paints, mixed media, because that was my jam. All right, so that's these things are from her Etsy shop, and I'll make sure to include it. And then last but not least for the haul items is this electric pigment agitite, ag agitator. <laughs> agitator. And I've been waiting waiting on this come to come forever. I did get it through Amazon. I can link it below, but I have some gouache. Let me show you. I have some of the Hemi gouache paints that I want to get back into. And they dry out when you don't use them. So, look. <laughs> We've got major dryness. So that's okay. I've had this happen before, but it did not have the agitator. So basically, you hook this up, right? And of course, is it in English? Yeah, take out the put the rubber into the rubber clip, blah, 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 and you just do the trigger switch. Press the power switch, and it will rotate on high speed. Remove the eraser with a diameter of five millimeters, so on and so forth. Electric pigment agitator. 
So yeah, I'm excited to use this. I know that there's videos on YouTube of Daxi Karen, I believe, who um, shows how she renews her gouaches in this state. And she uses an agitator. And so I thought, you know, I, since I reorganized my art room and kind of pulled some supplies that I haven't used in a while up front, I was like, let me go ahead and get this gouache out and do some things with it. Because I, I'll do it in coloring books. I'll do some of my own art, maybe even in journaling, you name it. All right, so those are my haul items. Okay, so I'm going to zoom me out a little bit so that you can see what what are my plans for the rest of December. I figured I would do all of this in one video because the chances of me being able to film multiple times and edit and upload and do, I probably shouldn't do that. So even though it's a longer video, I hope that you'll um, stick through it and then I'll have a little tour at the end. Uh, of my art room if you're interested if you're not you won't hurt my feelings I just wanted to give you an update on what I've been doing since I injured myself and what I've been trying to fill my time with besides resting and watching YouTube and uh, Hulu and Netflix and <laughs> all the things okay so let's see here now some of these are books for instance I really want to get something done in them and this is Debbie McComber's Holly Jolly Christmas so I definitely want to get something at least a background or just anything I love all the ornament pages I keep saying that and did you see in, in here there's a recipe for a candy cane layer cake <laughs> I don't necessarily want to color the cake but yeah I I want to get something I really like this crochet page too I don't crochet, but I'd like to learn. So yeah, I, I really want to have something, anything done in this book, even just starting it. And I have my uh, group buddy color that Doodle Robot hosts. And I want to be able to work on, let's see, it's this page here. This one here is the page that we are, are doing for this month, and I only have uh, maybe three uh, buddy colors, like half twos, color, like, I don't say have to, I want to finish those. If I don't finish anything else this month, I want to finish those. Those are the um, so much fun for me, and uh, a couple times I've had to renege because of my shoulder problems, but I want to power through and see what I can get done before the end of the year. And this is one of the pages. And that's from Magic Dreamland. Part of the reason I'm showing you these two is that I had all these grandiose plans to get through. You know, I did my Christmas and winter uh, book ideas on what I wanted to color. That's It's all gone by the wayside and I've had to regroup. So that's why I'm showing you. All right. 24 Days to Christmas by Coco Wayo started off great. And then... It went downhill from there because I was starting to have a lot of issues and filming every day became a problem <laughs> with all the editing and whatnot. So um, I did get day one. I did get, day, did get day two. My day three was a bomb. Um, I would like to go back and finish it because I don't like unfinished pages. But And then I got to four. And then I got to five and six, and that's been it. So that's about the time I got the injection in my shoulder, and I just knew I just had to start making decisions. What is it that I can do and what I can't do? And I created a hashtag, and all of you lovely people who are continuing with the hashtag 24Xmas Pages. I'm saving all your beautiful pictures so that my completed pages in December has all of your beautiful colorings for this advent calendar. I may try if I can um, to get a few others done, but it was intense trying to do it daily and do a video for you all. So we'll see. We'll see what happens by the end of the month. Um, and Fairy Tales by uh, Emily Lydahall Oberg. 
I started this page here. Oh, and I hope it's not stuck <sighs> just slightly. Uh, so I used a bunch of things. Um, okay. So I used this metallic, folk art metallic. I used this uh, Beach Vibe Glitterific Pop on it as well. And then for the crystals, what I'm doing is using this Lumiere Jacquard Paints. So I have that and then this Apple Barrel Summer Sky for my highlight color. And then I'm going to try to arrange it so that maybe I have some emerald and maybe some uh, like uh, topaz colored gems. Like I want to do some different colored gems. So this is this is just my baseline. I'll go in with Posca pen and detail all of the crystals. Uh, and then I'll probably do some little finer glitter, not the chunky that's here. And I want to make sure that the deer stands out and doesn't get lost in all these gems that I'm doing. So I'm trying to be a little careful about it, but we'll see how much I get done. Painting has been a little easier to do than pencil coloring, which is just over and over, you know, action with the paint. I can, I do it slower and I take more breaks. That's just me, but that's fairy tales that I started. And then in this book here, the Zen Doodle Baby Animal Winter Carnival, uh, illustrated by Jeanette Wommel. I started doing this page. And so for this one, I used some of this Lumiere. I used some Waverly uh, plaid acrylics. There's semi-gloss. There's three of these on there. And then on top, I used the turquoise uh, extreme glitter. So I did a varied, like there's teal in there, there's blue, all kinds of goodness. So it's making me happy to do one piece, at least of a page to start out with, make me happy. And this shouldn't be too much of a page to finish off, but it's a winter page, so I don't have to rush. And that's the same thing with the one in fairy tales is that because it's winter it doesn't have to be done by december but we'll see the progress i make joanna bassford's um joanna's christmas if you've seen on instagram i put this up i used a burgundy base folk art it was a black cherry actually this black cherry folk art acrylic and then on top, I use, where's my gold? This is the champagne. Here's the gold. And then I use this extreme glitter gold. And that's how I got this effect here. So I thought that was super cool. And I did that. Let's see here. That was last year's. I'm going to say I started another page in here, but maybe not. Let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I did. I did do another page. So this is, uh, let's see, where is it? Where did I put you? Okay. So long ago, back in the day, how I reignited my interest for art was through Michelle Nicole's unicorn spit or artistic vivations and these are staining glazes mainly used for furniture but they can also be used for other artwork they can be used in uh, pores like acrylic pores but it's a water-based product and then to seal it if it's furniture then you would use a, an oil sealer but in a coloring book I don't have to worry about any of that so it is a patina bronze and I thought that would look really cool on here so it has a teal uh, undertone with bronze and yeah I thought this would be really fun and it really kind of brought me back to those days where I was really enjoying doing a bunch of different mixed media um, and the smell 
It has a scent, teakwood scent. And you know how scents will bring you back to a time and a place. And I was just really enjoying exploring um, my artistic and creative side. And so this is what I used. It was just this, nothing else. It has the two-tone already in it. So I've got the background started for that one. I, I knew I had done another one in there. Um, so yeah, that's Artistic Vivations. It's Michelle Nicole. She has a Facebook page, Instagram, all, Instagram, all that. I will make sure to put it in the description. And then Hannah Carlson Seasons. I started a, a page. Where are you? Oh, there it is. This double page spread here. Now I used the Richeson Pastels with a Kleenex, rubbed it in. Sherry Denowitz gave me the idea to just rub your pastels in. Just like almost burnish them in. And then I went in with an eraser and removed some. And I'm going to go over it with an iridescent pen pastel to cover um, the whiteness here. Um, so yeah, and then um, I'm, I'm really hoping that I can finish this by the end of Christmas, but I won't, I won't pressure myself. If I can't do it, I can't do it. But I was super excited about the background. I thought that it looked really cute. Uh, so yeah, that's that double page spread in Seasons. And then Magical Christmas by Lizzie Mary Cullen. I did this page here and I started off see what I'm doing with my backgrounds and I used the mossy meadow matte and then I used my glitterific glit actually I used the hologram let me just yeah it was the hologram so that's what is on this page here I figured if I have the backgrounds down that it won't be too much for me to try to color this this is my theory this is my theory and I can just it takes me like 10 minutes to do these back to do the background 10 15 minutes um because I don't have to let well in some cases you do have to let the paint dry and some you don't so yeah there's magical Christmas by Lizzie Mary Cullen and then I have a, a group buddy color Woodland Kingdom coloring book and this month we are doing oh, it's before the page we did There we go. So I went ahead and did my Richeson pastels here too. And it's not actually a double page spread, but we're making it a double page spread. So I did some like lime greens with some purple and blue. And then I did kind of like a salmon and pink. And then here some like crystal colored things. So I'm looking forward. This um, does not have a fixative on it. And there's nothing on my fingers. So again, just rub, 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 rub it in. And also it's nice because you can take the um, Kleenex or paper towel, whatever you use, and you can rub out whatever you don't want. But I, I didn't care because I knew I was going to color over this one. But that's what I did for Seasons. So yeah, it's going to look cute, I think, with the colored pencil. <laughs> so that one for sure I want to finish. And then in the Rita Berman Winter, I did do um, these two backgrounds at the same time. Since I had my pan pastels out, I went ahead and did these. And this has the shimmer pastel on it. And uh, so, yeah, I just went ahead in a little bit with the trees. And then I'm going to cover it with colored pencil. <clears throat> I did put a fixative on this one, on these two just to see the difference. But y'all make them colorful and maybe make a bunch of different um, snowflake um, glitters and plan on um, whiting out the lines here. And then fun stuff with the snowflakes. But these are winter pages. I don't have to do them for Christmas. So that can wait. <clears throat> and then Entangled Treasures by Jane Monk. I started this page and all I did was use black glaze pen and blue glaze pen and then I figured when I could get around to it because it's not Christmas or winter 
then I can do the rest of the page real colorful. So yeah, it was my brainstorm for that one. And I was struggling. I just, I just wanted to put a pen to paper or paint to paper. I was desperate. And so that's why I wound up doing little bits and pieces. If you all know me by now, you, you probably have gotten the understanding that I don't like to keep whips. But I think moving forward, I'm going to have to do a little bit of that so that I can space myself out. So that's Tangled Treasures by Jane Monk. I have this one to do with my granddaughter. And so I definitely want to get that one done. And then in Romantic Country Eerie, I have... It's amazing how you can't find the pages <laughs> when you go to do the video. There we go. So I have this one to finish up. I've done um, Albrecht Dewar. And uh, so I just don't... I, I only have a little bit left to do on there. Um, snow, details colored pencil, unfortunately, details um, that I want to do. I could just put some Posca on there and just make some snow tips, but I want to do it justice. So I have that one. And then in this book is new to me, Jen Rancine, The Woodland Wonder. And this one... If I, was, I just saw it. <laughs> this one I did a very light pastel super if you can see it's super super light it's thin paper right so while I had my pen pastels out I just went ahead and did that thought that was a cute little mousse and not too difficult to uh, color and I'll have that for winter so that's, I'm just as you can tell I'm just trying to like begin some pages and give myself grace and only commit to what I can do but at the same time just trying to continue progress but safely now RJ Hampson serendipity I also did pan pastel in here and it's the iridescent metallic pan pastel I did it lightly here I did not carry it down to the ground and then I have the uh, green metallic version of this the Lumiere and so depending on how you um, have it under the light it's either like a like a limey green or a dark green so yeah looking forward to doing the rest of that page again it's winter so I don't have to get it done by December and then I had 50 nighttime mandalas I started this the other night with a limited palette because I asked you all on my community tab, hey, what's the best mandala book? Because <laughs> I thought if that's what I'm going to be able to color, <laughs> I need some good books. This one's fine. I just um, I wanted possibly a hardback or something that when I use my lap desk um, that I'm not having to fiddle with the paper. But anyway, so these are my Teo trees. And so I have two purples, two pinks, and a yellow. And this is what I've done so far. So we'll see how that turns out. This book came like curled. I remember when I got it. But that's Camellia Angel Cova. I'm pretty sure I will be able to fix that one. And then somehow I'm missing a book that I'm working in. And I don't know how I missed it. There we go. Tangled Treasure by Jane Monk. Did I show you a different picture? Oh my gosh, yes. I did this one, but I'm also doing this one. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. <laughs> so I started doing this um, with this uh, Michelle Nicole's Artistic Vivations in Atlantis. So I did that here, right? And then I went over it with the hologram uh, folk art extreme glitter. And then I used other extreme glitters to get different colored bubbles. Just to start out the page, I used, um, what did I use? I, uh, let me think about it for a second. Oh, I used the QOR uh, watercolors. I am losing my mind. And now I'm just going over with um, some Black Widows over some Tri-Blend Illustrator markers in 
these yellow orangey blends. So I based the fish that way and now I'm just getting into some details there. It's getting nice and waxy. <laughs> so yeah, I thought I would do some fun colors for the fish. This one is still based and this one I have the most done so far. But yeah, I'm just experimenting with different colors. I want to make the fish colorful and fun. And then I have all these little details in here to figure out what I want to do. Whether I'm going to do like white Posca or put more glitter. Um, we'll see, but I am, I am, this is the first colored pencil work um, that I've done since I injured my shoulder. So I did a little bit and I did have to take a break, like for the rest of the day break. <laughs> okay. So I think that finally does update you on what I'm doing. And if you're here this long and you want to see the tour of my art studio, I'm going to go ahead and roll the tape. Again, I just, I think everybody has to put a disclaimer. This is not bragging rights or anything of the sort. I've been collecting art supplies for a really long time. Uh, almost, let's see, nine, ten years? Yeah, I think it's about ten years. Yeah, for sure, it's ten years. So I do have a lot of things, but the point really was for me to say this. Coloring was a savior for me when I could no longer do some of the other art that I was doing because of my, you know, physical challenges. So I have that light I'm sure is bothering you. There we go. Because I've had some neck and shoulder issues for quite a while now. Having this happen while I switched to doing mostly coloring and then some art projects really devastated me, to be honest with you. Um, it scared me. I was... Uh, not worried that I had, you know, I was going to lose my arm by any means, but it was just so quickly defeating and I had so many fun plans for Christmas and I was excited about uploading a video for you all every day and it, you know, crashed and burned. And so I am able to acclimate and accommodate, but I usually do that more for others and less for myself. And so that's why I started to order a couple of things online, some org organizational stuff, and then reorganize some of my drawers because I could sit there in my chair and do one drawer, take an hour break, do another drawer. Some of them I didn't need to reorganize. They were fine the way they were. But I had books on the floor I needed to put back, you know, up on my shelf. All I can say is that when the chips are down, you just got to find a way that you can still do what you love, be a part of what you love. Even though coloring with pencils right now is a difficult thing for me to do, I did do some. So I'll be proud of myself for that. I do look forward to going to physical therapy and gaining strength uh, in my shoulder muscles and wrist and elbow. And I know I'll be back to tip top shape, you know, in probably six to eight weeks. But in the meantime, the reason why this video is so long and obnoxious is because I wanted to say thank you so much for all the outpouring and caring and saying something nice to me when I told you that I was going to have to take a break and I really wasn't going to know what it would look like or how long it would take. Um, but also, I wanted to let you know what I am doing while I'm resting. Uh, in between rest, you know, I am trying to get a few things done. And I think for 2024, it's really important for me to have my space the way that I want it. The things that I use most surrounding me and everything else that I want to reach for that I can through my chair. Like I don't have to, to bend down. I don't have to do the straining that I was doing. I did make the mistake of picking up like a cubicle of probably 20, 30 books. And that's probably the catalyst to what happened to me. So... Long, 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 long story short, you know, I just feel I, I owe it to myself and I owe it to you to let you know that I'm here to continue to make more videos. There's so many things that could have taken me out in life and they haven't and this sure won't either. And my spirits are good. I will get some coloring done. I will probably have a ton of whips to show you for December. Don't forget my granddaughter will be with me. I know a lot of you enjoy uh, seeing her original artwork and all that good stuff. So that's the update. I just wanted to give you a little haul. I wanted to give you a little news and update you on what I was working on and to just kind of show the progress. I mean, if you go back 
to my early videos, you can see what my art room looked like before. And you can see what it looks like now if you're interested. But it has made me, my spirits, lifted by getting things organized. Like getting my acrylics together. Getting my markers together. Like not having them spread out all over the place. Has brought me some peace while I'm recovering. So I guess that's the message that I wanted to send you all. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one. You all take care and leave a comment below about any of this, about what I talked about, about what I showed you, anything you like. Just be kind and be nice. I know there's been a couple of, not negative comments, and it, it's okay for someone to not like something I do or not like a, a piece of haul or product or whatever. I, I don't mind that. Um, but just a reminder, 99% I know of the people that come to my channel are good people making nice comments. It's a, it's a very small percentage, probably half a percent, come on there and say something dumb and you just wonder why they just don't come off your video and go to the next instead of leaving some rude comment <laughs> you know so anyway all right you guys you take care and I hope you're enjoying all of your coloring or any of the art things that you're doing this month I'll see you soon bye bye okay so we're entering my room and let me just give you a quick tour we're going to start in the closet <laughs> because I had to put my plant in there and then give it a plant light which I hook up there uh, and in my closet I have quite a few supplies sorry for the cord but I have all my fixatives I have oils uh, paints and then I have all of my gessos absorbent grounds and then down here I have some candles that I made, Mod Podge, one of my pencil sharpeners, and then I have a hair dryer and a bunch of paints that I used, chalk paints, uh, for refinishing furniture, painting furniture. And down here, if I can get down to the bottom, I have a bunch of canvases and art pieces that I have ongoing. And then I have my tablet here. And inside these drawers, I have my watercolors, several drawers full of watercolors, gouache, and then here's my Animal Crossing. <laughs> and then I have just miscellaneous things, you know, that you need. I used to do acrylic pours, so over here where you see the Elmer's glue, that was one of the things that I uh, used with uh, like a liquid silicone to create cells. And then I have my diamond paintings. And then I have some uh, tablecloths and some bags that I use if I ever go out with my art supplies. And then up here, these boxes are slowly getting filled up with different things, uh, camera equipment and such. Some of it I still need to figure out. And then here is a, a painting that I did. I think I've shown it before that I framed, and this one as well. And this is from Bailey J with all of the holographic fun. And then here are my two art carts. So I have my pastels on the top, my pastel tools in the middle. And then on the bottom, I have my Thule art uh, and oil pastels on the bottom. And then over on the left one here, I have my Cali art, alcohol markers, uh, water-based markers, my um, uh, Crayola. What are those called? The um, Let's see here. The Squeak Skinnies. Those. <laughs> and then I have the Ohuhu uh, Metallics. And here I have my thick pit pens, some uh, various other uh, water base markers, and my Teo Tree markers there. I started working on a shadow box with all of my Disney related pens that I got over the years. That's my laptop case and that stool is not normally there but it is right now 
and my tripod and then try not to make you sick <laughs> and then I'll pan over to my desk so I have an L-shaped desk and I have some project things over here uh, this portion right here I'll get in a little closer I am doing a project for that that I'll let you know about in this video and I'll also uh, tell you about this uh, maiden, what I have gone ahead and put in there. I have my uh, Neo Color 2s, some random gel pens, all of the equipment that runs my ability to do my filming, and a hopefully not too quick of a pan. Uh, I have what I'm hauling today that I'm going to show you all. Like I said, this is a project here that I'm working on. I'm trying to get all of my skin toned pencils from all the different brands swatched out and in a folder. And then inside, because I won't be able to show you on the fixed video, what I put in here were my combos. So they're all in order. And then down here, I have my metallic Sue color uh, pencils just because they didn't fit in the case. And then I have my large Krita colors, and then these here, and then I have all of my blender uh, pencils as well. So I've got the metallic Krita color, and then the brilliance, I think it's called, and then the regular mega Krita colors. And I'm working on a page, those are my Black Widows, and then, you know, all the little miscellaneous things, we've got some Huggy Wipes, <laughs> scissors. All that good stuff and then here's my gel pen selection Posca's all, all the metallics that you see me use I use this little uh, uh, machine to uh, print out pictures of what I'm working on uh, each month for my completed pages and then I have all of like washi tape and tags for my pages erasers for my electric racer I have all of my paints not all of them but ones I've been frequenting here recently, my Ahuhu markers, my Tri-Blend Spectrum Noir, some Copics, a small selection, and then here, <clears throat> just some miscellaneous, there's the case to my phone, <laughs> and then um, I have some notepads, and just kind of like miscellaneous things, this is what I swatch on video, um, and I have these out for a project here, as well as these paints, and these watercolor cards. I'll tell you about those. So I'll slowly step back and let you see. And let's see here. Over here is my printer, which needs ink. <laughs> With the paper, I have that file over there is empty. And then uh, these are books that I let the children, the grandchildren come and color. My 2024 uh, Sarah Renee Clark. Uh, calendar and these are just things that I'm working on or I have my uh, color family chart things in here projects swatches of watercolors uh, some PDFs some books that I will be working on for the month generally not this month and then I just have my bookmarks that I've made and some uh, old book depository and this parallel pen with um, replacement inks and then I have all of my sheet protectors in here and there's a little painting I did quite a while ago with lots of glitter which I'm sure you expected <laughs> then I have my uh, AF matte commercial grade uh, sharpener and then I have my easel which has been hiding in this corner behind me where I first showed you my carts. I've had this painting for a couple of years. It's uh, an oil painting and I sketched this elephant. I wanted to do some really colorful artwork there. And then I have my acrylic supplies in there as well as in this netting. I have uh, like my Windsor and Newton uh, ones in there. And then I have Amsterdam and Daler and Rowney, 
so yeah, I this is all a new setup for me. These are my my headphones case. I've been rocking out some music. <laughs> and then I'll pan over to my shelving. And that's the owl uh, painting that I was uh, telling you all about and showed you in my other video. This is where, these were from Timu. And I keep a bunch of washies in here. And then I have uh, my glossy accents here and some stickles and different pastes. Some stickles here. And these drawers just pull out. Get what you want, go back in. That's a really neat system. So here is what I wanted to color for Christmas. And this is my YouTube slash coloring notebooks that I have where I'm marking down buddy colors, ideas for videos, so on and so forth. And then here are books I'm actually in this month. And then on the top, I need to do a little bit more organization here, but I have my Sarah Renee Clark cubes there. And then we've got some Crayola products, some highlighters, some random things, and then my books in alphabetical order by illustrator mainly. And then up here is where I have all of my Hatchet Heroes, and then uh, all of my, let's say, out of the United States books. Minus the Eerie, because I did get those uh, through Amazon, but I keep them up here. So anything Korean, <clears throat> Japanese, whatnot goes up here. And then in this section, I have uh, mandalas. I only have a few books here. You saw on my YouTube community tab that I was looking for a really good uh, mandala book while my uh, shoulder and elbow are resting. And then I have these bigger books, Wildergorn here and we've got some Hannah Carlson and Denise Collette and Markova and then here are my painting books I put all of my just add color books together and oops there goes one and yeah and then we come down here I have all of my reference materials um, and then I start with Kalur, Brute Funer uh, Sue Color, which I just got, uh, Speer Farben, uh, the Lyra Rembrandt, the Indra Creative, Arajatin Arteza, the Posca, Artex 126, all of my Derwents together, Polychromos, Prismacolors, Tablas and Luminance, and then Holbein. And then down here, Drawing Supplies. Um, miscellaneous and mixed media paper and here's a little house that I little cottage that I want to build a little glass house and I have some uh, rubber stamp making supplies watercolor cloths brushes miscellaneous watercolor things and then I have my jars for watercolors and then my paper and journals for watercolor. And then I have a tracing light up pad here, some other mixed media, another painting that I've done, <laughs> and um, a watercolor uh, pad that I got at Blick a little bit ago in Pittsburgh. Okay, Let's see if I can catch my breath from being on the floor. You really know you're old when you're out of breath when you get up. Up here I have um, brushes, some of them, the long brushes I would use for my easel, so I get the smaller ones for coloring at my table. And so, yeah, I enjoy showing you this because when I realized that I was injured and that I might have to back off coloring, I was devastated <laughs> and my art room was a mess because I couldn't keep up with it and so a little bit each day I've been going ahead and trying to get little things done and so yeah this this is it so this is my filming station here I have my two lights I have a ring light ring light here and 
my overhead light here and then I have one of these in case I want to do vertical videos but yeah I think I've shown you everything but this is what I've been doing when I haven't been able to color is just doing little bits at a time and trying to reorganize also to get myself ready for some de stash I, I just did some already and uh, I intend on possibly doing some more sorry about that flashing light on that battery bank over there and over to these drawers now I did have them nicely labeled but I've moved some things around and I lost a couple of rollers on the bottom so I have shimmies underneath them <laughs> but I'll just show you what's inside of these here I have my um, water-based uh, crayons ink tents my Albrecht Dewars, um, any watercolor pencils, um, and gel crayon that are water soluble in there, except for my Neo uh, twos, and then two extra uh, pencil sharpeners. And then in here, <clears throat> I have my distress inks and these scrapbook daubers. I have my Winsor & Newton white ink and then various different inks here Bombay inks and then aqua inks from graphics and then I have my distress oxides and back here I have inks with an ink pen and some different um, stamping pads and then I have these June 6 inks and I have the Faber-Castell metallic gel sticks and gold leafing and more metallic gel sticks down here. And then I have my Faber-Castell gelatos. And this is just the uh, metal leaf paste. And then in here, I have my water brushes water bottles, my Athmat electric eraser, a bunch of my blending pencils, my uh, colorless alcohol markers and water-based, um, more blending type things and kind of miscellaneous stuff in there, rulers. <laughs> and then here I have stencils and random like mixed media type things I have stencils underneath here glue I have um, distress crayons in here and then I have uh, water-based markers in here and my stabilos in here and uh, I forget the name of those, but you probably recognize them. And then the Arteza Ink Onics in there. And then on this side, I have, uh, these are watercolor cards. I have uh, a Hoo Hoo Metallic Acrylic Paints. I also have um, Hemi, two sets of gouache. And then I have uh, I have some kosher salt back there, some water bottles, sanitizers for the gouaches to make sure they don't grow any kind of mold. And here are my metallic watercolors, my Etsy's, and then Arteza watercolors. And then I have some random, let's see, these are the Daniel Smith Extra Fine, and these are also the Extra Fine Daniel Smith, and I have some Timu watercolors back there. It's basically all watercolors. And then in here, I have gouache sets from Arteza, the Acryl Gouache from Turner. And then these fun acryl gouaches that are metallic. Windsor & Newton gouache. 
And then here I have these Jacquard Lumiere paints and Posca pens. And then these are the Guangna, or as they're called, Light Wish uh, acrylic markers. And these are acrylic 3D liners, which are fun. Here are my Guangna acrylic pens. I have uh, two sets because I love them so much. I had gotten mine from Timu, not through the branding Lightwish. I have some outliner uh, metallic pens, some uh, random uh, permanent markers, and then in here more acrylic pens. And then here are my jelly supplies. I have the jelly papers the jelly plate, the speedball, inks. So that's what's in those drawers. I think we got everything.